Alright and gents, I'm Rusu GVX and this is 142 non-million degrees. What would happen next with the channel real life floor? Yeah, I think this is the maximum cap of the temperature that we can explain with laws of physics. After this, laws of physics, because, you know, uh, we can explain what happens after this. Just like how when something goes inside the black hole, our laws of physics cannot explain how black hole is even there. Because the densest thing is obviously neutron star. After that, how can be th how can things be more denser? So our laws of physics just you know, uh, you know, breaks down there. So just like that, I think this is the maximum level of cap. That beyond this, I think our laws of physics that we have right now would break down. I don't know. So yeah, how the matter would behave at that temperature? I don't know. I don't know how would matter behave at the lowest temperature. Obviously, yeah, it would create some kind of exotic matter. You know, or every everything would work as some kind of a quantum state as one. It's a weird thing you could put through your hand or through things and the matter would just move aside and it's just weird. At this high temperature, I don't know. That's all this one. Remember people, if you like my reaction, don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out the reaction I did. There's a link in the description. Check out the cast wall uh, playlist, like real life lore. Uh, I've reacted to quite a few videos in 24 hours. So you might have missed some videos because YouTube might not have sent notification for it. So check out the playlist. Uh, you might have missed some video. Check out the playlist too, like all these sarcastic production, CGP Grey, Internet Historian, Tier Zoo. And yeah, let's do this one. This video is made possible by Brilliant. Start learning intuitively with Brilliant for 20% off by being one of the first 200 people to sign up by clicking the link in the description. So the title of this video is What Would Happen If The Temperature Somewhere Reached 142 Nonillion Degrees? Which, for reference, has this many zeros. The answer is weird, but to prepare you for it, we need to start with some weird things that happen at much lower temperatures. Yeah, I think that this is the temperature that was when the Big Bang happened, obviously, at the fraction of fraction of the second. At the time, the universe was expanding so fast, you know, uh, the, you know, basically particles were not interacting with each other, so there was no temperature, but it's weird. Yeah, afterwards, the universe started to vibrate, temperature went to in trillions, not non-millions, and yeah. We can begin our journey at negative 273.15 degrees Celsius, also known as absolute zero or the coldest possible temperature in the universe. In 2003, scientists at MIT came very close to achieving this temperature when they got just a billionth of a How? degree above the limit. That It's near impossible to reach absolute zero because it's simple, if you want to reach a temperature, you need something even below that temperature to extract heat from. Absolute zero is the lowest temperature there is. So in order to reach that temperature, you need something that is even lower temperature than that, which is not possible. So reaching the absolute zero is near impossible. They are seeing like some kind of a, you know, expansion of gases and things like that. That could maybe do it, but I highly doubt that. Reaching absolute zero is the literal low cap and just the way temperature works. I don't think that's possible. You could come close to it. Just like how, you know, you could uh, theoretically you could come close to, you know, going at speed of light, but you cannot travel at speed of light. I think you cannot reach absolute zero like that means that the coldest temperature ever observed anywhere in the universe was actually just right here on Earth in this laboratory. And just barely above that, at negative 273 degrees, is the lowest temperature ever survived by a living thing. The cute great. but almost indestructible tardigrade or water bear. Once we get a little warmer to negative 216 degrees, we arrive at the coldest planet in the solar system, Uranus. Warmer still at negative 184 degrees is the average surface temperature on the dark side of the moon, and just one degree higher is when oxygen starts to boil. Earth is comparatively much warmer than most other planets, because the coldest temperature ever measured here naturally was negative 89 degrees taken at the Vostok station yeah. in Antarctica. Antarctica. The lowest temperature ever recorded in the US was negative 62 degrees in Alaska, which is even colder than the average surface temperature of Mars is at- Alaska has minus 62 degrees, damn, how do people Believe that man, this is ridiculous. Minus 62 degrees Celsius, damn. I can't even process that. Negative 55 degrees. Finally at zero degrees, we reach the melting point of ice, and just slightly higher at 13.7 degrees is the lowest body temperature a living human has ever had. The average human body temperature is 37 degrees, and 46.5 degrees is the highest recorded body temperature that a person has survived. 
57 degrees is the highest temperature recorded in the U.S. taken in Death Valley, while 71 degrees is the highest surface temperature ever measured anywhere on our planet, taken inside of Iran. But there are places out there in the universe that are far hotter than anywhere on Earth. Did you say Iran? surface temperature ever measured anywhere on our planet, taken inside of Iran. But the Iran? Hottest places in, in Iran? There are places out there in the universe that are far hotter than anywhere on Earth. Despite how cold the moon is on the dark side, the average temperature where the sun does shine is a sweltering 101 degrees. Despite these two opposite climates, the tardigrade I mentioned earlier could survive either of them. The highest temperature that one has survived was an amazing 151 degrees, but the universe still gets way hotter. 462 degrees is the average surface temperature of the planet Venus, the hottest planet yeah. in our solar system. Raising the heat even more, up to 1027 degrees and we get to the maximum temperature of a flame burning from wood. Uh. Lava freshly erupted from a volcano can hit 1200 degrees, but candles can burn even hotter up to 1400 degrees. Eventually we hit the boiling points of silver, iron, and carbon, and at 5 Candles are hotter than lava? Huh. 1000 degrees we reach the temperature inside the initial blast of a conventional chemical bomb. The temperature you would encounter at the surface, the surface of, the sun of the sun may seem very high at 5,500 degrees, yeah. but the temperature inside of the Earth's core yeah, is 6, even hotter at 6,000 degrees. Yeah, this surprised me the first time I learned it. Like, surface of the sun is like 5,500 5, degrees Celsius, but core of the Earth is 6,000. Obviously, it's the core of the Earth. And that's the surface of the sun, but you still think that big ball of plasma, which anything come close just gets obliterated. You think that, you know, the surface, even surface of that temperature would be higher than the core of the earth, but no, core of the earth is 6,000 Celsius. So those people saying like dig through the center of the earth, really? I mean, can you send any kind of material at the surface of the sun and that material survives? No, then how are you going to drill through the center of the earth? It's 6,000 degrees Celsius. But hotter than either of those is the temperature inside the fireball of a nuclear explosion, which yeah. can be up to 10,000 degrees or even more. But outside of the sun's surface, the sun's upper atmosphere can reach an unbelievable 1 million degrees. Down at the sun's core, Wait a minute, what did he just say? ...or even more. But outside of the sun's surface, the sun's upper atmosphere can reach an unbelievable 1 million degrees. Wait a minute, is that through radius and how is that working? I mean, if the surface of the sun is just five and a half thousand degrees Celsius, the upper atmosphere, which is one million degrees, huh? Down at the sun's core, the temperature can reach an even more insane 15 million degrees. Yeah, that's but that's some, yeah. nothing compared to the heat generated from the blast of a supernova. When a star enters into a supernova state, it heats the gas around it to a mind-boggling 55 million degrees. Yeah. When smaller stars collapse into neutron stars, though, the newly formed neutron core has a temperature approaching 100 billion degrees, which is 6,666 times the temperature found inside of the sun's core yeah. but the hottest temperature ever recorded I mean, is the neutron star like i said at the start of the video the densest matter that our laws of physics can explain so of course it's gonna have that high of a temperature anywhere in the universe was right back here on earth created by scientists at cern in switzerland using the there large hadron collider they created extremely fast collisions of lead ions that briefly generated a temperature of 5.5 trillion degrees which sounds like a lot but it was limited to a very tiny area around where the ions collided but the hottest temperature that might be possible in the universe is completely unbelievable 142 no nillion degrees is the temperature at which our conventional understanding of physics begins to break down. Yeah. In theory, there is no limit to how much energy we could put into heating something up, but there so far is no scientific theory for how matter might behave at this- See that, that sentence alone, there is no limit to that. So, 142 nonillion is where our laws of physics that we understand starts to break down, but that's the thing, we might discover something more beyond that. So I'm imagining some massive particle accelerator at the, you know, size of the moon, diameter of the moon, and even bigger than that, once in the future when we create it. 
you know, with the energy output, immense high energy output, you know, we might try to go beyond that temperature, obviously. And it will be safer because it's in space. I mean, come on. So, you know, the, the things we would discover then would be ridiculous. I mean, that would, you know, spearhead lots of things. I mean, string theory in lots of the uh, things that string theory puts out requires high amount of energy that requires those massive particle accelerators. So the future of physics and science is those massive ex particle accelerators that we would build in the space. And I'm pretty sure the demand of that is so high right now. Obviously, it's not in any government's mind right now. Government does not care about it. But scientists want that a lot. So uh, when spa space becomes so accessible, like how does, you know people are trying to go to Mars, Elon Musk and things like that, I'm imagining in few decades there will be a top priority thing to create a massive particle accelerator in space. That would be just awesome. This high of an energy level, we simply don't know what would really happen if we managed to heat something up this hot. But we can speculate a little. This temperature is known as the Planck temperature, because the radiation emitted from an object this hot would have a wavelength equal to the Planck length, a distance so unbelievably small that we don't know how or if we can measure distances that are smaller. Because you would be condensing so much energy into such a small point, going beyond the Planck temperature could be enough to turn the area or thing you were heating into a black hole. Creating a black hole with energy instead of mass like this is called a Kugelblitz, and it could pretty quickly become a bigger problem than whatever damage the heat would have caused to you. Yeah. Our math so far can't describe what- You know what, let's create that particle accelerator outside of our solar system just to be safe exactly would happen if we went beyond the Planck temperature. It may create a black hole that would instantly radiate away, or it could destroy the Earth, or it may do something else completely unexpected by anybody. The mathematical models that we've developed so far are incapable of explaining it, but if you'd like to take your shot at it and go down in history as a scientist celebrity, you'll need an understanding of things like calculus, quantum mechanics, and general relativity. The numbers and concepts that go into learning these things are hard and confusing for a lot of people, including myself. But taking the courses over at Brilliant yeah. has helped me. Yeah, people, go to brilliant.org for as we left floor and support this channel. Yeah, I mean, uh, particle accelerator, if it creates some kind of a black hole, it wouldn't have mass to stay there. So if, if we just figure out safe distance to create that, even if something goes bad and black hole does come to be, I don't think that's going to last long because it still needs lots of mass uh, to sustain it. But yeah. All right, that was 142 non-million degrees. If you like my reaction to food, like and subscribe. Check out the reaction I did. There's a link in the description. Check out the cards, all the playlists. Check out the end cards, and I'll see you next time.